Ejo, 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 ejo. Hello and welcome to my. Can I still say new channel now? Welcome to my old channel, where we take old clothes, um, cut, 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 cut. Hello and welcome to my new channel, where we take old clothes and make it fashion. So first of all, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy 2021. I'm glad that it's over, this 2020 disaster. Today I just wanted to go back one more time to 2020. I promise it's the last time. I did a live video last week where I reviewed my upcycles of last year, but it turned out to be one hour something and a little bit long. So that's why now I wanted to make a little bit of a shorter video that's a little more bearable to watch. So if you want to know the tea, the good and the bad, keep watching and subscribe if you like what you see, of course. A few inches later. Ask it back remake. Which I got complimented on that it looked better than the original. So this is a design from The Road, a fashion label by Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. And I feel like this is one of the tutorials that people are actually following along with. So I'm definitely planning for 2021 to do a little bit more of these accessible projects. It was quite easy, basically sewing a square and sewing some handles on it. Let's be real, if you're planning to make some cute bag like this, it's not pickpocket proof at all. Everyone can just slide their hands in and steal it. So what I do is I wear my fanny pack inside so that's why I keep all my valuables and basically everything that's in the bag I keep in the fanny pack. So this was one of the first videos I made. I ended up calling it the poppy flower blazer, I believe, because it's kind of looking like poppy flowers uh, in an abstract kind of way. So it's heavy rope embroidery. And you guess now how many times I wore it. That's right, <laughs> never. This is such a statement piece, perfectly suitable for a cool event or something. Turned out there were no events. And this was ending up somewhere in the back of my closet. I would still stand behind this design. I think it's original, creative and kind of cool. However, I would do it differently. I would maybe use a little bit of a heavier flannel jacket, for example, because embroideries are really heavy. And I would reinforce the fabric first before I start embroidering with the heavy row. I already did the whole bag and then I wanted to iron on still the iron on interfacing basically and of course nearly impossible and that's why on the back it's a little bit like bubbly or something so if you are in doubt it's always better to reinforce than regrets wow that could be on a tile it is then we have this cropped blazer that I did from the same jacket as I made the ascot bag. I think it's definitely more of an editorial kind of piece because it's very oversized. It has this huge Balmain shoulders or like Vatman shoulders that were kind of a little thing, in my opinion. I think I run into like the shoulder pad police online. Shoes? No. Pants? No. Shirt? No. Overall, just no. People accusing me of saying big shoulders were a trend, although it wasn't. So I don't dare to say it's a trend anymore. But I still have this jacket and this huge shoulders. I don't know, I kind of digged it. This is not something I'm wearing, but I definitely would for a party or something. If I, you know, don't really need to use my hands for anything. Up next, the 3D Shibori pants. This was my first time, very, very, very first time I did it. It kind of filled miserably, but this I love. I think it fits my style so well because it's kind of this nice mixture of uniqueness without looking overdone. You can wear it to the supermarket, you can wear it on a party, you will stand out everywhere, but in a subtle way, you know? You don't look like a fashion clown, just a wearable item with a lot of character. So I'm doing hand washes with it and I don't twist the fabric, I don't rub it, I just let it drip out in a bucket and it has 
to dry for two days, which is annoying, but at least the texture stays in there pretty well. And that's what it's all about. It's not the most exciting kind of process, although the steaming. I got steam heat. Letting it dry and getting all the screws out, having all these kind of little voices in your head go like, ooh, ah, ah surprise. <laughs> And getting this surprise effect is very fulfilling to do. I just hope all the camera settings are good because, well, I didn't use it for a week. <laughs> Apparently, I already forgot. So, the pom pom bag up next. Bleep, bleep, bleep. The cute denim pom-pom that I made on this little handbag. Great concept. Love the handle. I think it's cute, I think it's usable. Except. Except, 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 except. <sighs> I have to clean my room again. It's just shedding like a Shetlander. If a Shetlander would shed, of course. It's coming like little threads off of it constantly. If I would do it again, this will take a little bit more work. I would take the denim pants, draw the strips that I'm going to cut exactly on the bias with a ruler, and then cut them almost perfectly out of the fabric. Then I would make the pom-poms, wash them in the washing machine, and then I would add them to the back. And I think in that way you would have much less shedding. And the DIY popcorn shirts, basically also done with the shibari technique. This time I rolled in um, eyelets and buttons. I want to say coins, but I don't have so many coins. YouTube didn't make me rich yet. But um, yeah, that was a fun project, especially the result was very fun. I don't know if it's fun to sit and roll in coins for a couple of days. I think you can buy this 90s popcorn shirt still online, but this does, in my opinion, look much more refined. There's a little bit of differences in textures in there. So in the back, it turned out shorter, and because I didn't do where the buttons are, it's longer in the front. And that all makes it look very organic and chic and fancy and cool. It's a bit of a hybrid between a blazer and a shirt, and I think that also makes it um, looking high-end and... Just fashionable! Okay, do I need to sell it more? <laughs> like a popcorn couture shirt. Popcorn couture. If you know what I mean. Huh? 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 No, let's keep this here peaceful. I say hey, uh huh, hey, 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 And I've been wearing it a lot. I've been literally wearing this jacket until November because it was not a cold winter this winter. Checking the fringes to see how they look. But in my opinion they hold surprisingly well. I was scared that maybe the fusible adhesive would like let loose, but it doesn't seem like it really does. I think the trick is just to iron for a prolonged time with high heat. And then when you cut the fringes nicely on the bias, it will just hold pretty well. And I'm actually a little bit surprised that it does so well. Throw it on and you look immediately finished, like done. You can go to the catwalk of Milan, New York and Japan and just, you know, be a model, you know, on the catwalk, on the catwalk, on the catwalk, on the catwalk. I shake my little touch on the catwalk. The heat gun experiment, well, um, the people who saw the video knew that, uh, you know, it was not my biggest success. Oh. Oh. I am obsessed with the technique because it gives almost this kind of 3D Shibori effect without all the work. 
You just go over it with a heat gun and you create this bubble texture. So I had about four or five garments, like this white pants and this shirt. And I selected them all to be 100% polyester because I thought that would give the best effect. However, it turned out... Can you see? Can you see my finger? <laughs> yes, it turned out I was burning holes in basically all the garments and I had the illusion I could maybe avoid it by going really quick. It was not possible. So someone suggested to use a heat gun that had a lot of temperature setting that, so that you can basically stay below the burning point of polyester for example. But because I don't want to really buy another heat gun, I do want to make this technique work in a way. So I'm planning to experiment more on material blends. For example, 50% polyester and 50% cotton. I already did some tests and I have the feeling you really burn much less quickly holes if you have a material blend. The fabric merging kind of needle felt pants. Loved the end result back then. Still like it. I was scared that it would not be durable at all but I must say if you treat it with a lot of care it holds quite well. So you can see that here for example some of the threads got really loose but I've worn this quite a lot also in videos usually you don't see it because I film from you know the waist up so I try to wash it as little as possible and so when I did wash it I literally hand washed it with you know gentle soap water so I decided after a few times that I would not go on my bicycle with this anymore. This is more of a pants to be pretty, not to, you know, exercise in. Doing literally nothing in my activewear. So I think with this kind of needle felt projects, if you really want to do it on clothes, you just have to touch it up from time to time. So I could definitely just pop my mat in there easily and just needle felt over it again and it would be attached again. It just needs to be treated with love sometimes, if you know what I mean. Mm. <laughs> okay, can we talk about what I'm wearing, guys? I know you noticed. And oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I love it too. So, that's a corset kind of waist thing. Beautiful eyelets. So, this I've worn a couple of times. Definitely one of the trendy pieces I did on my channel. It's one of those things that I didn't really want to get started on because I thought it would be really difficult. I'm not really a tater or anything like that. But I must say, this was one of the sewing projects that went very smooth. I didn't expect it to fit so nice. I made the mistake to say this is good for your back. A lot of people didn't agree with that. But um, I definitely think it reminds you to kind of stand straight because i've been bending in it the boning has kind of bent too and it's not that straight anymore i think it's a shame so maybe the next time i would go more for this iron kind of boning or just don't bend in it i guess also with this boning in some places it's kind of a little sharp when it peeks through the bias tape then the acid burn shirt so this was treated with this outbrenner acid that I use quite some times on my channel by now and I just can't stop with it. It's just so fun to do. I've been wearing it in the summer. It's very easy breezy but also quite fragile of course. This was basically the leftover from the Victorian shirt so the sleeves were cut out and I could not really be bothered to make a facing in the armhole. Well I'd recommend you do that or you just don't come close with the acid to the armholes because basically I make a hole at the armhole and it just ripped open when I wore it for the first time I think. But that's really something you can prevent if you just basically are not being lazy like me. <laughs> Then I have all the patchwork items, or well, the two patchwork items that I did this year. So that's a kind of quirky tank top, as I like to call it. And this one I made with a 60 piece pattern, I believe. So for every little part, I made a pattern part. And let's be clear about that. I think if you have that complicated of a pattern and so many seam allowances, it's definitely not gonna be a, you know, precise pattern at all. 
overcomplicated maybe. I love to wear it though. And it's just a little bit sexy, a little bit quirky and a little bit of everything. So one of my favorites as well. The cycling pants, I mean, I did not really think I would wear it a lot. I'm not really a cycling pant person, I guess. But I wanted to show another way of making the patchwork, which was basically sewing all kinds of, you know, pieces together and then just cutting a simple front and back pattern out. I think that method was at least a little bit easier, but still you had to kind of fit all these pieces together in a way. And <laughs> I got all these kind of funny shapes in there, which I didn't mind, but it's definitely not like a smooth patchwork. It's getting a little bit 3D with these points coming out. I think I underestimated that a little bit. I thought easy to sew pieces of fabric together and get like a flat result. It's not. But for beginners, I would definitely recommend this method, but just go for very big pieces. Don't start with, um, you know, 60 pieces like this. <laughs> this video did actually pretty well for my small channel. People, I think, really like this technique and a lot of people actually knew it. I never heard of it before, but apparently it's a thing. However, I would not do something like this without the special knife for it. I didn't know they sell special knives, but it's basically like something that protects the bottom layer. I did not even realize when I was doing it how many little holes I made in the bottom layer. So I definitely want to do it again on the back of a denim jacket. I think that can be really cool, but I will buy this special knife though. I wore it a couple of times so that I guess it's not gonna be one of my favorite pieces to wear just because it's a little bit bulky. So the next time I would definitely use a little bit less layers of fabric to make it less bulky. And I would not use like men's shirts in there because oh, I didn't realize, but men's shirts just don't really fray nice. Let me take. The Victorian sleeve shirt, well, I better call it the pirate sleeve shirt now, I think. I'll get it this time, I promise. Don't worry. But I think it's also the prints that make it a little more like, I don't know, questionable. We definitely liked to show you guys how you can basically make your sleeves much more puffy by combining two different shirts. However, I just took some shirts that I got for basically free at the textile waste and this is just not really my print. It feels a little bit like, you know, I go to the office with that blue uh, check, but I don't even work in an office. However, you see quite a lot of people making basically a corset kind of bottom in a shirt, so basically sewing in boning and make a bottom corset and then have the shirt in the top and I think maybe for this shirt it can be quite nice to make it a little bit more Victorian. So let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video like that. <laughs>